Hi everyone, um, I'm going to show you guys how to create a Microsoft SQL Server database file that you can later use in a uh, Windows form for uh, VB.net or a uh, web form for ASP.net. Alright, so first of all, uh, I'm running the Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition, yeah, as you can see there. All right. Uh, so first thing you need to do is to click on the view and then Server Explorer. So that will bring up uh, whatever connections you may already have. So I have uh, some that's, that I've made earlier. So I'm going to create a new uh, database file called nutrition.mdf. Uh, uh, so I'm going to and I'm going to place that file in a particular folder. So first you click on Connect to Database. Right. So you set the data source type to be the this one Microsoft SQL Server database file I leave everything as is click OK um, and then uh, here is the location and also the file name now I have a folder here I uh, I'll show this folder alright so this is where I'm gonna place the, the database file alright so right now it's empty alright coming back to Visual Studio um, I'm going to call this database nutrition uh, .mdf. I'll leave everything as is and then click OK. I'll ask you if you want to create it because it doesn't exist yet. So click yes. All right. So now it appears on the left side in the Server Explorer Explorer tab. So open it up. Uh, right now is empty, so the next thing we want to do is to create uh, a table for this, the recipe table. Uh, so right click on tables and then click on add new table. So the next thing we want to do is to name this table. So what we'll be going around, we'll be interacting with a few uh, windows. Uh, the first of which is this uh, uh, SQL command tab. Next is this uh, design table design uh, uh, window, and then you have uh, things like keys and indexes on this side, and finally you have properties, the properties tab uh, down here. So first thing I want to do is to rename this to the recipe table. All right, all right. Next thing I want to do is to change that to lowercase id. Uh, type integer is fine. Uh, so next thing I want to do is to make sure that the id column is auto incremented uh, by by one every time I create a record. So to do that, first I select the field and I come down to the properties uh, tab, look for the identity specification, click plus, uh, set the is identity to true, and then it will set to identity increment to one and the identity C to one, which means that the first number you will start, uh, start with will be number one and each subsequent records you add uh, will be added by one. All right, so that's done for that. Now for the rest, I'm just going to add uh, fields as per the lab sheet that you guys already have uh, on Moodle. Uh, so it's category, bar chart 50, allow nulls no, um, energy is an integer, again, allow nulls no, and finally, cooking time uh, is an integer, allow and else no. So next thing I want to do is to make sure that the name field or the name column uh, is guaranteed to be unique, meaning that you cannot add records with names that, are, that already exist in the table. So to do that, I right click on indexes here and then click add new and then index. Uh, so first thing I want to do is to rename this to uh, name UIX. So that's just the name I've chosen. All right, press enter. Uh, change the column. Right now it says the column, so change it to the actual column that you want to index on. So in this case, it's name. All right, and finally you click on this index again. And come down to the properties tab. Look for the is unique field. Turn that to true, and basically that that is it. So that will make sure the name column or the name field is unique throughout the entire table. 
All right, so I'm done here. So the next thing I want to do is to update the database. So I click on the update uh, button. Uh, if all goes well, uh, you'll have an update database button that you can press down here. Uh, so you click that. And if you notice here, uh, it's doing some work and eventually it's done. All right, so it's done. So now if you come back to the Server Explorer, if you refresh it, you'll be able to see that there is now a recipe table uh, in it. Now, uh, the folder I mentioned just now, if you were to look at the folder, uh, you'll notice that now it has the, the database file nutrition.mdf. All right? All right, this one's just a, a log that the system automatically created, the Visual Studio uh, 2017 automatically created. And that's pretty much how you create a table inside this database. So next thing I want to do is to actually maybe populate some data. So uh, I'm going to click on, just click on, right click on recipe, and then click on show table data. And you should be able to see this. So now you can start typing some data. All right. Um, curry me. I'm just going to type a few. Uh, um, uh, is it soup base, energy, I don't know. I'll just put 100. Cooking time, maybe it takes an hour. Uh, right, enter. Uh, as you press enter, you notice that the ID fields are actually filled uh, because of what we did earlier. So I'm just using uh, shift tab and tab to move between columns. So uh, maybe next thing is nasi lemak. Um, rice based thing. Uh, energy is a bit high. Uh, cooking time, I think it's about half an hour. All right, so that's it. And you just keep on filling this data up. All right, uh, once you finish, if you want to use this file, remember this file sits inside the, the folder that you had placed it, it earlier. Uh, I, what I found is that you, if you want to use this database file in your project, you, the, the best way seems to be is to close Visual Studio first. All right, so you close Visual Studio, reopen it, and then, uh, then only you can include uh, that database file into your project. All right? So that's it so far. Thanks.